Hi everyone, it's Lindsay with High Altitude Astrology bringing you another video and today I'm going to be talking about the new moon that happened yesterday, February 23rd at 8.23 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. And you can see here a new moon is where the sun and the moon are located at the same degree of the zodiac. In this case it happens to be four degrees of Pisces. So new moon times are always about beginnings and they tend to uh, set the tone for the lunar month to come. So this lunar month will have the vibe of Pisces. Uh, that's the degree that the sun and the moon were at. And Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. So theoretically it's, it's, it's indicative of the fact that the energy it contains the energy of all the zodiac signs because it's been through all of them and now finally it's in pisces so it, as it is a um a new moon is a beginning time but pisces is actually considered also an ending energy because it's it's the sign that comes right before Aries and Aries is the beginning of the zodiac. It, it is symbolic of springtime. Uh, so at this new moon time, we are experiencing a beginning, but it is correlated also with ending. And um, Pisces is a lot about really just encompassing everything. And it, it's an emotional water energy. So there's this element of needing to surrender, uh, completely let go, um, to trust and have faith. These are all Piscean qualities. So there's something about this new moon time. And again, the new moon is where the sun, which is our individuality or our will, and the moon, which is our emotional, lunar, responsive nature, feminine principle, are working together at this time. So there's a harmony between them. And it's suggesting that we can really move forward this month with those two harmonious um, energies together in the sign of Pisces, basically just really giving over to this concept or this experience of allowing, of letting be, of surrendering, of having faith, of having trust, of expressing ourselves with a more spiritual perspective that brings a larger understanding and acceptance to everything. So that's the general energy of the Pisces new moon. And I want to read the inside degree from Elias Lonsdale and what he says about four degrees Pisces is this. Mushrooms springing up everywhere. You're being engulfed by external and internal factors and facets that suddenly are there everywhere and come right in. No boundaries, no separative container. The universal life force carrier and representative, incapable of pulling away from the collective call of life, is intoxicated with it all. Massively taken over by emergent currents and whatever feels vitally important. Impressionable and suggestible with an unbelievable depth and intensity. Absorbing the shock of all that is happening here, raw, and impelled to rally people around to bring everybody alive, to make it happen. You ooze conviction and resonance with this basic core spirit in each and all, 300% all the way. So for me, this really suggests a feeling of like surrender, but at the same time, there's, there's an excitement about it too. And I felt this, yesterday when the new moon happened, it just felt like something shifted and a lot of the resistance to things in life kind of just sort of blossomed open. And there was a, a different frequency that 
I was able to feel an experience that uh, brought not only uh, more of a acceptance, but also not uh, also perhaps like a feeling of being curious as to what's next, or maybe even some relief. You know that that ah now there's there's a new chapter getting ready to begin. So. I want to talk about a few other aspects that are happening with this new moon energy in the chart. And one of them is that Mars at four degrees of Capricorn is sextiling the new moon and, uh, in Pisces. So Mars in Capricorn, Mars is how we assert ourselves. It's, it's this male principle of, of um, self-assertion and going after and taking action. And when I say male, I don't mean just for men. I mean, there's that energy within all of us. It's an archetype. And it's currently in the sign of Capricorn. And Mars in Capricorn is what's called exalted, which means it works well in this sign. And if you think about it, Capricorn is this grounded, earthy energy that's about um, perseverance and it's about um, hard work and effort, but it's also really just about taking responsibility. You know, if you think about it, the symbolism of it, it's the goat climbing up that rocky mountain. Um, it's really just about really being in our own personal authority and taking responsibility for our lives. So that is what is being suggested with Mars and Capricorn. It's like, okay, Mars is like, we've got this energy, it needs to be directed, it needs to go somewhere, and Capricorn is saying, and we will, we will put it towards being responsible, taking things seriously, um, working hard, putting effort towards. So this energy right now with Mars sex, uh, in Capricorn sextiling this new moon, it's kind of helping the new moon energy because Piscean energy can become a little bit um, boundaryless. It can, can become a little bit um, uh, so feeling oriented that it loses track of reality. But you know, it, it, it can kind of get lost in the imagination of things. And so this Mars and Capricorn is actually saying here's some very grounding energy that can help us at this time to perhaps take some of our new ideas and our new creative expressions or our new imaginative um, ideas and work with this Mars and Capricorn energy to apply them. But I also think with this Mars and Capricorn, it's also kind of saying, how do we move forward taking action in our lives with with boundaries, with personal authority, with an integrity. Uh, that's what the Mars in Capricorn is suggesting. And uh, it's, it's helping us to do that in a compassionate way as well, because that's what Pisces is all about. But it's also saying, let's not um, compromise really our integrity as we're um, moving forward. And it's helping us, it's helping us stay solid and uh, it's helping us stay grounded uh, moving forward. Now, the other thing that's happening too with this new moon time is that uh, Uranus is at three degrees of Taurus. And the new moon is within a degree of sextiling Uranus at this time too. And it also uh, is important to point out that Mars has just trined Uranus. And I'll discuss that in a second. But uh, the sextile from Uranus to this moon uh, in Pisces, new moon in Pisces time, you know, Uranus is all about um, this ch collective change that we are all going through. We are all waking up collectively to new values, to new values in our relationships to new ways of relating to the material world. Those are things that Taurus is about. And we are getting kind of electrical insight, uh, new understanding, 
elevated awareness, new consciousness around how to relate to the material world, how do we relate to relationships, um, our, how do we relate to our personal values, to our personal possessions in this Aquarian, excuse me, in this Uranian way that has to do with progress, with invention, with evolution, with humanity. So there's something going on with Uranus and Taurus for the next six years uh, that this new moon in Pisces is stimulating. And as we are letting go, as we are surrendering, as we are tuning into trusting in a higher order of things, Uranus is also there supporting us. And it's kind of saying, hey, have this new way of looking at things. Have um, a spirit of progress, a spirit of invention, a spirit of evolution um, as we're surrendering that, that uh, trusts that there's, there's more to come, you know, that this story is continually evolving and that we can also incorporate these new understandings that may be arising into this very, um, well, in you know, some ways kind of need to move forward in a way where we're letting go. I mean, Pisces is a lot about that. It's clearing out the old. It's clearing out a lot of unconscious emotional energy that has been stored, you know, in our unconscious and that needs to be uh, just let go of. But Uranus might even be helping us just kind of like blasted out in a sense or or uh, allowing us to to see that unconscious material in a new way that um, helps us to elevate our perspective as we move forward in creating new values or now moving on to this uh, Mars trining uh, Uranus again for me what this is suggestive of is more innovation new understanding, but we can actually apply our energy, apply our energy towards moving in a new direction. Um, our steady, persistent, hardworking, consistent energy uh, towards moving in a more evolved way that's in alignment with new values, with new ways of relating to relationship with new ways of relating to the material world. Another thing that's going on at this new moon time is that Chiron in Aries and Mars in Capricorn have just squared. <clears throat> and Chiron in Aries, it's going to be in the sign of Aries for a long time, uh, but we've, been getting a lot of Chiron and Aries energy because Chiron's been uh, connecting with, with the nodes as uh, the nodes are getting closer and closer to moving towards Chiron. And um, what, and, and it also is important to say that Mars right now is close to the South Node. So actually, let me, let me address that first. Mars in Capricorn near the South Node. So the South Node, if the North Node's at six degrees of Cancer, the South Node's at six degrees of, of Capricorn. So in the next few days or so, Mars is actually gonna come in a day to an exact conjunction with the South Node. Um, the South Node is about what we've experienced in the past, um, really more like in past lives and what we've brought with us to this lifetime that can be things that we've mastered, but at the same time, it can be sort of what we're familiar with. And so it keeps us, <clears throat> it keeps us behaving perhaps in the same ways because it's familiar and not necessarily um, evolving into new ways. So what, what this is saying is that Mars is moving into an activation of that South Node in Capricorn energy. And we are being asked to really kind of take action uh, 
in order to let go of some of these old South Node and Capricornian ways of behaving. Um, and what might that be? Um, that could be things like, well, I've got to do it this way because I've always done it this way. You know, that's Capricorn. It's sort of like not having a bigger vision about things and just sort of doing it the same all the time. It could be things like just asserting ourselves uh, in more dominant ways, um, saying, I've got to really work hard. I've got to really work hard at this in order to resolve it. But see what the North Node is saying in Cancer is like, actually, it's about what feels right for us. What feels right? That's the direction that we need to head because that's what cancer is all about. It's about emotions and feelings and what makes us feel nurtured and what makes us feel secure. So Mars is going to be going over this South Node in Capricorn and activating that energy, basically allowing us to kind of dump some of those old ways of ingrained thinking and behaving that, that we've feel like we've got to, you know, keep doing things, things the same way, um, or they're not going to work out. And with this Chiron in Aries, having just squared the Mars, what this has been doing is, well, Chiron in Aries is about a wound. And it's about, um, there's also, it's about the key to our wound and the key to our wound through healing. And Aries is all about self-assertion and, and um, like that really creative impulse. Um, it's about feeling like we're, we are, you know, feeling like we have self-confidence and courage and strength. But if there's a wound there, there's, there's something that's saying uh, somewhere along the way, we got the message that no, what, what we want doesn't matter, or we can't go after what we want, or um, what we want isn't um, right. You know, these are all <laughs> expressions of the Chiron in Aries energy. And so what happens is we sort of mute that part of us, and we then are not really fully acting out or connected with what it is we really do desire. So on the one hand, Mars and Capricorn having come by and squared that Chiron, it, it's kind of saying, here, here's some energy, Mars, to have some real personal authority around asserting yourself, around believing in yourself, around, you know, doing things. Um, sorry, if the Chiron in Aries energy uh, is expressed in another way, sometimes it can be this excessive uh, expression of that Mars nature, like more about like trying to dominate and just only thinking of yourself and, and being extremely self-centered um, because on, it, you know, we're acting it out because on some level uh, we feel like we have to push really hard in order to get what it is that we want. So in, in any case, this Mars and Capricorn is coming along and sort of toning that Aries uh, Chiron and saying either like hold back a bit more, like have a little more personal authority, or it's saying, you know, go after it, work hard, you know, whatever it is, um, it's, it's helping us sort of heal some of this Chiron and Aries woundedness and giving us some kind of strength um, to, to behave in new ways that are no longer the expression of the wound, but rather the expression of feeling, um, feeling healed. So it's kind of suggesting that, that the lesson or the healing comes when we no longer have to battle and fight for what we think is right. You know, it's like we can just do our own thing and do it from a place of love and having a, a loving approach just kind of drops uh, drops the fight with others. And this Mars in Capricorn 
squaring it. You know, a square often represents a, a, a challenge that has to be worked out. And this could be saying that we need to realize that our ways of asserting ourselves, we really can have more control over our energy uh, so that we don't have to um, fight and battle for how we feel or how we see things. You know, if we're not resonating with others, we can just ha have an open heart and realize, okay, this isn't, this isn't my tribe or this isn't, you know, the right frequency that I'm resonating on. And it doesn't necessarily have to be um, something that has to be, again, battled out or fought about, you know, we can have a sense of personal authority or personal control. Um, and it's interesting to note that Mars rules Aries. So there's something about Mars that is suggesting how we can handle this Chiron and Aries energy right now. And the last thing I want to say about the new moon is that we also have Venus at 18 Aries squaring Jupiter at 18 Capricorn. So Again, if we look at Venus and Aries, it's this very pioneering spirit, Aries. Uh, but Venus is about our loving nature and our creative nature, but it does relate a lot to relationships. And so if we look at Jupiter in Capricorn, Jupiter is about self-improvement and about expanding our perspectives and seeing things in a new way. So to have Jupiter in Capricorn, again, this grounded Earth energy squaring that Aries and Venus, this is almost like a similar theme to the Mars squaring the Chiron in the sense that it's saying in our relationships, Venus in Aries, in this desire to want to assert ourselves and go after things and go after what we want, we need to have this um, way of handling things that has a, a perspective that suggests we have some sort of control or um, self-containment, you know, that we're really improving, self-improving in this diligent way, in this, you know, this very uh, grounded, earthy way that doesn't just... Um, you know, run rough shot over everybody. Uh, I think that the Venus and Aries can very much, you know, want to do that. It wants what it wants at all costs in a sense. Sense, But Jupiter and Capricorn is suggesting like that we need to sort of be able to pull the reins back uh, when necessary in order to create uh, positive expansion and growth in our lives. And again, with Mars and Capricorn here too, Mars ruling Aries, it's, it's also suggestive of that, that sort of ability to sort of act in a way that is more grounded uh, with more uh, self-control and uh, personal authority. I think that's everything I wanna share about the new moon time. I hope this next month for you is positive and if you have anything to add to this insight please feel free to comment below if you like my channel please subscribe and i'll see you next time take care